We are together again just praising the Lord. Powerful, powerful. And we, we, we had the issue of the power in a man. We didn't finish that, but we can't exhaust it. But the little bit or sections that we shared uh, are okay uh, with you as a man. We, we would have wished to, to share more, but we will revert back to that topic later. We will come back to that topic later as we preach, as I, as I reach out. I would like today to share on an issue that has been, people have not been sensitive about, and Satan, in a very strange way, has drifted us from that sensitivity. Issues that are so persistent in families. Uh, and we want to, to, to share on deliverance. Deliverance of families from curses. Deliverance of families from curses. Now, we who are married or who are existing, we were born in a family. We were born in a setup. We were born in a pre existing system. You are not created from heaven and you found yourself somewhere crying and growing up. Your mother, in fact, if you check the Bible, since the days of Adam and Eve, if you read Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, the first one, the Bible says, and Adam had sex with his wife, and she conceived. She had pregnancy and gave birth, gave birth to a son. God came and he said, God has used me to bring about a son. You see, there was a contribution of seed from a man and an egg from the woman. If you check the current world constitutions, they say, do not marry somebody from a close family ties or affinity. Don't try to marry from a closer blood relationship. There is a likelihood to bring together what we call in a normal language inherited corruption eh? meeting in your formation of children and there's a likelihood to bring some impairment, children with some deformity in a certain generation now or after you. Why? You know, the, the Bible says we have been saved from the past corruption. And we need to know some things, friends. Let me share from the scriptures. There is somebody known as Gideon. In the book of Judges chapter 6. If you read Judges chapter 6 verse 11. We have an incident. Where the angel of the Lord. Surprised somebody. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came. And sat under. The terebinth tree. Which was in Ophla, which belongs to Josh, the, the Abezrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from Midianites. The angel of the Lord, verse 12, that is Judges 6, verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. The Lord 
is with you. And God has brought about his might. Eh? You are mighty man of war. Did you marvel at the new title being installed in his life? You are mighty man. And yet you are hiding in a pit somewhere trying to hide from Midianites because of fear. You are a man of fear. You are a man who runs away. You are a man who hides from enemy. And yet, according to God, you are mighty man over enemies. I said to you, friends, this is wonderful. Wonderful. Hallelujah. You are brought up in a family whose blood constitutes fear. You have been raised up in a family of people who hide or withdraw from battle. But God comes now with a new title which is contrary to the genetic characteristics drawn from the past. What you are now. You are a man of fear. But God says, no way. The original title what you are now, you are a mighty man of war. You are hiding from enemies. You are afraid of enemies. And you are known to be a man who runs away from enemies. But God says, you are not a man who runs away from enemies. You are a man who runs after his enemies. Not only your enemies, but the enemies of your nation. You are a mighty man. And Gideon said now, I have a problem with you, age of the Lord. I have a problem with you, Lord. And I have questions to level towards you. He says, if I am mighty man and I'm significant person, I have several sentiments, questions. Gideon saying, if the Lord is with us, why then, that's verse 13, why then has all this happened? Why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles? Which our fathers told us about saying, Did God, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us. Now the Lord has forsaken us. Now look at the look at the way God answered the question. God says, God turned to him and said, Go in this might, not the might that has pre-existed. It is new impartation. You are now going with this might. I'm imparting on you power to become what I said. Go now. In this might. Go now in this might. Yes you must go. Go. And you shall save Israel. Not only yourself. Israel the whole nation. From the heart of Midianites. Have I not sent you. It has no relation. With the past. It has no relation. With your. Blood relation. People. It is direct definition, impartation, title installed by God. You are going to wipe out enemies that you dreaded so much, that you ran away from, that you hid away from. But now, by my word and my presence, you are running after them and you wipe them out. And then Gideon also had another question. Sometimes we say clear the alternatives. <laughs> Remain with an absolute clear way. And Gideon said something now. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, if I'm going to save Israel, I have another issue. A family issue. He says, indeed, that is verse 16, my clan is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh. And I am 
the least in my father's house. And the Lord said, there's something unique here, friends. Let's look at that. Indeed, my clan is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh, the clan, their family. Number two. And in my father's house, I am the least. Now, he brought about the issue of the family and the clan. He says, I belong to the tribe of Manasseh, and my clan is the poorest and the weakest. Number two, I, Gideon, the person you are referring to be to as the mighty man of war, I am the least in my family. Those are the sentiments that he heard. But the Bible says, they all said to him, surely, you know, God does not, God does not use the elements of your family and clan to constitute the personality he has decreed on you. God does not create by using pre-existing elements. God creates by declaring from his mouth. God do not borrow from Mr. A and Mr. B and Mr. D to bring together what he has borrowed to constitute or to create what he wants. Even if it is a new personality in you. He says, I'm not using the background. I'm not using the record of your clan. I don't refer to any record in your system. I have come from heaven with a resolution from the committee of heaven. And we never refer to any man when we are making our resolutions. I say to you, Gideon, you are mighty not because of who you are and where you have come from and the status of your clan and the level you are in your family. You are mighty because I will be with you. The presence of God will cause you to be what he has decreed on you. And now by the word of God, we destroy every lie of the devil in your life. I cast every feeling from men and receive now an original idea of God that never borrowed any help from man when it was being constituted and made by the committee of heaven. May God heal you from heaven. May God make you rich from heaven. May God give you a new name from heaven. May God bring his might from heaven. May his will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. May his kingdom come and take dominion over your life. Oh, may the Lord produce you afresh from his own power in heaven. I said become new now. May God raise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says something, friends. Now, Gideon was told, now I'm going, you are going to defeat the enemies. And you are going to defeat them just as a single person. The strength will not be the magnitude of the army. The strength will not be the magnitude or the level of armory. The level of weapons. The magnitude will be, the strength will be God. And you will defeat the mighty, strong enemies, Midianites, just as one person. So that glory will go back to God. And no one will be able to conclude or to determine where strength came from. They can only accept God intervene. Now, can, can, can we... God deeper. You know, when Gideon said, you know, my clan, my father's house is the poorest and I'm the least in that family. Surely God knew there's a problem there. If you go to the same chapter, 
Judges chapter 6. Let's go to another verse. Verse 25 says, Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to Gideon, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal. Baal was a satanic idol god. Tear down the altar of Baal that your father has cut down the wounded image that is beside it. Verse 26. And build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. Can you hear this, friends? Can we now try to connect issues? There is Gideon saying, in a, my father or my clan is the poorest in the tribe of Manasseh. And I'm the least in that family. And God says, my first assignment is to solve the problem in that family. What could be the problem? Why? Can you please try to imagine? Why did God allocate the first assignment to be this way? God to your father's house and destroy the idol god the idol the bar idol satanic image of bar in your father's house cut it into pieces and replace it with the altar of jehovah i want to believe with all my heart the altar in Gideon's family was the main cause of curse. Because Gideon had a problem. How come, how comes my family or my clan is the poorest in the whole tribe of Manasseh? How comes you are the poorest? And God said, I'll show you the problem. Is the altar of the family. Is the altar in that family. God, now, break it down, break it, bring it down, and replace it with my altar. So that from today, the altar of Jehovah will speak in your family, and the issue that you are the poorest, your clan or your family is the poorest in the tribe of Manasseh, will, Manasseh will cease from today, replace the altar. I want to speak to you, friends. One of the causes of the persistent poverty class, chronic diseases, failures, stagnation in families, is not just a response to life, it's linked with the altar that speaks in your family. How do we get such altars? One time, I want to, to introduce to you to one or two things that bring about such things. I say satanic attacks in life has three areas to handle. And spice families. One, curse. Two, the sin. Because every curse has a seed and the seed original seed of the curse was sin sin evil that grew up to become a curse and the third thing we deal with is the demon that was assigned to propagate to implement that curse the demon with the assignment of that curse. So curse, sin, demon. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want to say to you by the authority of the blood of Jesus, no one should deceive you. 
I've been making prayers in families. I said I will visit families in their roots. And I tell you, friends, whenever we gather those families, after prayer and fasting, when I start declaring a new altar, I tell you we have experienced such heavy manifestation of the, of the dominion of demons in families. Some family members manifested to be devil worshippers when I declare new altars in families. Some, some of the relatives came about not knowing that we have the anointing and they confessed they have practiced witchcraft in that, those families. One of the things that we need to understand is the blood of Jesus Christ removes and dissolves the claims of the devil in families. Uh, let me say this. I, I explained one day uh, how things work. A curse can start with sin. Persistence, rebellion in a family, or it can start with an opening that gave way to a demon. That's when we talk about toehold. A demon comes not knowing whether it has a space, so it steps using the toe, toehold. Later, the demon, when it discovers there's no reaction, there's no reaction, nobody is recognizing, nobody is resisting, the demon goes to the second state. Stage, we call it foothold. It steps in well. And when the demon discovers, nobody is reacting. Nobody is applying the blood of Christ. Nobody is applying the name of Jesus. Nobody is having God's presence allowed. The demon stays on, stays on, stays on. It masters the family. It masters your life. And the demon can claim what we call in law adverse possession. Whereby it stays on now and claims to own legally, legally own something that family. When it stays on, it builds a stronghold. Remember, toehold, foothold, stronghold. At that level, let me say something. No demon will stay on and just decide to get out. Demons are there to be cast out. And if a demon came in, in that process of toehold, foothold, stronghold, and you never cast it out, whenever you go, even if you go anywhere, it will still have effect on you. Family people, do not assume issues. Let us face the devil head on. We must call him by his name. We must address him by his function. We must articulate and discern who he is. We must make sure he actually gets out. Devil must be cast out. Demons must be cast out. You don't stay on until the demon gets tired to get out. No way. No way. I say, friends, do not just wear a good suit and move around and assume things are okay. Where your families are getting. The other day, I visited a family. And there was this issue. Any woman married in that family, or any daughter or son in that family, whenever your wife or husband will get pregnant, if the pregnancy is of a male child, that baby would only survive one month and they would die. And if you visit that family, you notice there are so 
many, many barrier sites, whatever. It was, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was interesting when you see graves of about twenty children, babies. If you get a boy, is it a month death? Is it a month death? And one day there was this barrier day of a baby of two months, one month. And one of the members of the family who used to be a pastor at the end of the ceremony, burial ceremony, stood up and said, please, men of God, don't leave, please. I want, he said, I want to say there is a curse. When you can see all these graves, these are graves of baby boys who only survive a month and they die. And he said, let us raise in our hands and cast their spirit. Repent the sin of this family. Let us anoint this family. And family members, they actually said, no, you are. Eh? They said, you are exposing our dirty linen in public. You're not supposed to say that. He said, no. It is common. It is open. All people know that we always have value of such nature in our family. They pride. They pride. And they said, we put to a net the operation of this demon. We repent the sin of this family. We release the blood of Jesus to be the foundation and the art of this family. And I said from that moment, no baby boy has died. We have boys surviving. You know why? Somebody addressed the demon and commanded it out. Somebody repented the sin of that family. Somebody declared the new altar of the family the blood of Jesus. Now because the blood of Jesus is the altar of that family, baby boys who are born, they always live. No fear, no fear. I said to you, you people who are suffering, if your son has joined Satanism, we must address it and destroy the demons and the attachment. If your daughter, we suspect, she is connected with witchcraft, we can't leave it. We can't leave it that way. Because she will continue and somehow, somehow, cause death, sacrifice family members. We can't wait any longer. We have to address the powers of darkness. Uproot their operation. Destroy the weapons they are depending on. And make sure they go to the bottomless pit. By the authority of Christ who rose from the dead. It must happen. Friends, I want to address your issue. You must be delivered. And that demon that has taken dominion in your family, it has to live now by the authority of Christ who rose from the dead and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. It must happen. Demons don't just stay on, get tired, and decide to leave. Demons are parasites who stay on to consume families through curses. Remember, toehold, foothold, stronghold. When the demons get to that level, they give birth to a curse. And a curse can be propagated from generation to generation, father to sons and daughters. And at that level, the, the there is that characteristic completely absorbed in the genetic propagation of the family. You produce people under that curse. It has to be stopped by the blood of Jesus Christ. I would like to say something, friends. I may not finish this topic, but I would like to say this. What produces this thing? One thing is the altar that was established in that family, the altar of the devil, the altar of witchcraft. Another thing that brings out curses is spirit of rebellion. 
spirit of rebellion. Spirit of rebellion. Is funny. Spirit of rebellion. Rebellious spirit in the family. Walking and behaving directly contrary to the will of God. Even grieving the spirit of the living God. There's a family you check. Daughters. Sons. From their forefathers. They always rebel against God. Until that created room for a curse. Another thing that caused. Another thing that caused those curses. Is what we call attitude. There are families that have an attitude that instills a direction of caste. You have been forced to speak, to agree, and to think in line with a certain plan of demons. So your thinking creates way to the operation of, the, of that demon. You are patterned after a certain demon that influences or hovers over that family. You, you think, you are forced to think you are always be poor. You speak it. And it gives room to the operation of that demon. The language of the family, the attitude, the confession, the feeling, the move is patterned after some fear instilled on you. Another thing that brings about those curses is spirit of defeat, whereby spirit of defeat, giving up, no resistance against failure or evil. A family that always give up. You've never resisted the devil. You've never resisted evil. You've never resisted. Spirit of defeat. No warfare. You just flow with what comes of the way. We just, you just become what comes on the way. No resistance at all. You are product of defeat. You are product of conforming to the standards of this world. And you become. You remember Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 2? It says, we used to walk according to the standards of the world. Mm -hmm. The spirit that operates in the children, uh, the standards of the world according to the prince of the air, is it that way? The spirit that operates in the children of disobedience. Look at that. Walking in conformity to the standards of the world, the other, the prince of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. So there are people who place themselves, who place themselves under the defeat and the spirit started working in your family. There are other families that never reproduced. You never reproduced. I I'm talking about I'm not saying you never reproduced by giving birth to children. You never reproduced your own system of blessing. Do you know these days, people come in poor, but they become. They become. You see, it's like what the Bible says, when Adam and Eve gave birth to Abel and Cain, Cain became a farmer. Abel became a sheep, a, a keeper of sheep, becoming, becoming a family that never became. You just have birth certificate. 
I did it of birth. But in the world, in the world, you never produced anything. You never became. The people you see around are product, not just of birth, but of somebody who became. I rose up, fought all forces of darkness, forces of evil men, until I became what God declared on me. I can now produce blessings after becoming that I do not only have birth certificate, I do not only have a passport, but I have produced a profession. I have produced a kind of occupation. I am now becoming competent in product. Cain became a farmer. Have you become anybody? Force yourself to become Fight, resist, command your brain to think, pray and fast, destroy obstacles until you produce a family that has a name, a family that has an anointing, a family that has a name, not name of birth, but name of what you produce. Remember Jabez? He had an issue of birth. The mother called him Jabez, meaning pain or sorrow. And that, you know, whatever you speak in physical life invites the spirit of what you speak. And the mother to Jabez spoke in the initial stages, gave a bad name and gave the cost a bad spirit of sorrow and pain. Listen carefully. Jabez had no one to deliver him. He made a decision and said, Lord, expand my territories. Bless me indeed. And Lord, bless me in a way that I will never cause pain. You know what he said? I have been God pain, bless me until I terminate this curse. And from me, henceforth, I will never produce pain. He says, I will never cause pain. And therefore, somebody should rise up, destroy the spirit of defeat in your family. Reproduce something in your family. There are families that are under curses because of wrong yokes. Being yoked to unbelievers. You are a good man. But you married a thief. A witch. You are a good girl. But you married a fornicator. You are a worship of Jehovah. But you married a devil worshiper. You got yoked to people who come to your family to introduce death. Jezebel was yoked to Ahab, King Ahab, through marriage, and she brought curses. The daughter to Jezebel got married to the son of Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat. And the Bible says, actually the daughter to Jezebel was a real replica of her mother. And when she got married to the heir of King Jehoshaphat, the son of King Jehoshaphat, she brought in Judah. A demonic spirit. Actually that woman started killing one by one the family of David. She was almost to wipe them out all. It's not an original thing. But somebody, a curse gets in through yoke. Don't just get yoked to anybody. Just because people are human beings. We care so much the content of the character and faith and practices. Yes, 
Sometimes there's what we call covenant rings. There are people who are yoked through satanic covenant. You made some friends, like you youth, make friends, visit anywhere. You want to tell us all people are good, all people can be, that we are all one. We are not all one. The Bible says, they that receive Christ, he gave them power to become the children of God. Not born of the will of man, not born of blood, but God himself. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, don't be yoked with unbelievers. For what do we, what do we have in common? What do we have in common between believers and believers? Righteousness and evil. The Bible says, come out of them. Come out. Do not touch anything evil. I will welcome you. And you shall be to me sons and daughters. Young men in the church, not people, all people are people, whatever they are. But not all are sons of God. And not all are, not all are, are friends in your life. Some of our young men, just because in high school you get friendship to anybody, I send you to high school, university, declare your testimony and faith. Let all people know you are saved. And you are radically saved. No room for compromise. Uh huh. Some people get sexual bondages, habits that brings lifetime entanglement, forming habits that destroy your gifts and talents. You need to be very careful. Another source of curse is witchcraft, covenant with witches that connects individuals. Or families with the powers of darkness. This keeps family within network, programs, and schemes of satanism. One time I was called in to pray for a girl in the neighborhood of the church. And I went. I was saying, no, that girl was unconscious for several hours. Almost in a coma. Several hours. It had happened for some time. Remain unconscious, almost in a coma, for four or five hours. It repeated again. This time, she was almost dead. When I went to that family, before I started praying, the Lord spoke to me. And I said to the parents, Parents, I, I was almost to lay hands on the girl, but God commanded me to stop and directed me to address an issue with the parents. And when I talked to the parents, I, I discovered when this girl was a toddler, a small baby, they removed some items in her body, nails, hair, and made a satanic covenant with witchcraft, connected her with witchcraft. And God told me, the problem is not the daughter, the problem is a secret with the parent. I demanded that they get saved, repent, and the blood of Christ to cleanse them. And when they got on, you know, you know what that happened? When they got onto their knees to get saved, the daughter rose up. When parents repented, the daughter got healed. Some people need to repent. Sacrifices. Connectivity with witchcraft. And it's all over. We don't say in Africa, go to other some countries in, in Europe. We have registered witches in western countries. A registered witch recognized by the government to perform witchcraft, 
Some countries are funny. Eh? It's as if they have classic witchcraft. Eh? Classic one. is organized witchcraft. In Africa, because people are poor, sometimes they vibrate aloud. In some countries, they don't have that, but they just kill by powers of darkness. They cause the sicknesses, inflict some diseases, destroy, cause accidents, sacrifice blood of human beings. Now we need to be very careful, friends. There are people who entered into cars because of ignorance, being ignorant, inactive, lack of interest, lack of enthusiasm in right things. So people were brainwashed. People were satisfied in the failure. People who fear active life or getting busy in life. There are people who live a life of with the draw. We don't want to be active. We don't want. And they have a defense mechanism system. They are brainwashed. And they end up in a withdrawn cast position. Others, resonance, spirit of delay, diversion, missing seasons of life. You've lived for 50 years. Things just passed, passed by. You never own anything. Laziness, lack of sensitivity, lack of discernment, always late. When chances come by, you always arrive late. Slowing down in life, entanglement, confusion that lacks priority or speciality, being, being prone or slave to the spirit of devourer, whereby you are, you are subject to the spirit that always consume any blessing around you. You are not able to think or make decisions wisely or swiftly. Your mind is bowed or misguided. You know, laziness that is constituted by some habits. There are people who get curses because of wrong faith. Having spirit of diviners, false prophets, who divide and deceive family members. Their spirit always consume family assets and finances. Any family that is subject to diviners will end up confused, divided, and poor. And Capacity. Diviners will always destroy the intelligence of the family. Capacity of the brain. And creates a network with satanism. Destroy or block every talent and creativity in a family. Others have ended up in curses because of disobedience. It is key to failure and curse. Just disobedience. It's so clear in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. It says, if you shall diligently hear the voice of the Lord your God and be careful in obeying his covenant, this blessing shall follow you and overtake you. The same chapter, verse 15 says, if you are not careful in hearing the voice of God and you don't care about keeping his covenant, these curses shall follow you and overtake you. And you can read about those curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, almost to verse 68. They are there. It's clear in the scriptures. Friends, we need to know how to be delivered. We will talk about that maybe next time. We need to destroy. We need to destroy curses. We need to declare anointing in those families. Anoint those families. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost break yokes. We need to repent the sin of that family. We need to cause that family to arise because some families will be delivered when people arise. 
We need to cause them to make a decision that responds to the call of God. We need to raise them and make them overcomers. Because the Bible says, I give you power to trod over scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. We need to change their position. We need to get those families to live in covenant with God. We need to change their attitude from, you know, there are that any curse instills an attitude and a confession in a family. We need to destroy that and bring. We need to cause families to unite under the feet of Jesus. We need to cause the family or individuals to ultimately receive the power of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, and be completely filled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Because curse is a spirit. Demon is a spirit. And complete deliverance must, uh, must ultimately finish by the Spirit of God taking over where spirits of curses used to reign. I always insist, whenever I pray for deliverance, there should be total deliverance from sin, total deliverance from Satanism, total deliverance from any legal, legal, legal claim by the devil. We uproot demons and they actually go. We destroy Satanists in those families and they must to the Lord. They must. We destroy sin and the reign of sin that family. We get them saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and they totally get saved. We declare a new altar in that family. The altar of the word of God. The blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We get the family move in a new direction. No stagnation. No stagnation. No stagnation. And we lead them to the baptism on the Holy Spirit. It's important because Holy Ghost is the helper. And Holy Ghost brings the cover. The cover and the hedge of fire around the family. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the new altar that speaks in that family. Satan, I curse you. Devil, I destroy you. I rise against these powers of darkness. I bring down the dominion of powers of the air. I bring down the rule of Satan. Prince of the air, I curse you. Destroy your strongholds. And now by the word of God, I command release of that young man. I command release of that woman. That single mother, that family, that marriage. Now I destroy witchcraft. I cast the roots of sin. I cast the roots of immorality. I cast the corruption in your blood and in your inheritance. And now, in the name of Jesus, receive sound mind. Receive strength now. Receive power to rise up. Receive now. Satan, your reign is over. I say, whoever is watching this, pre this presentation, the reign and the rule of the devil is over in your mind, over in your marriage, over in your family. Become rich now. Repent your sin. Be delinked from Satanism. I command every item in your body that belongs to Satan Items of covenant, item of satanic covenant, be it earrings or rings, be it necklaces or any clothing, any charm, any item that is covenant of Satan in your family and your body. I render it powerless. I render it powerless. And the project that you satanists are operating to cause accident, to cause cancer, to kill people using chronic diseases. I cast that project. I destroy it now in the name of Jesus. 
whoever watches now your family is delivered your body is delivered you are no longer barren give birth to children oh live long life in fullness of years and fulfillment of blessings i command new altar in that family the altar of the blood of jesus the altar of the word of god the altar of the holy spirit now and forever in christ we pray amen